question is how can Ireland be a model for this and uh, that's what I want to try and explain to you uh, today in about, in about a quarter of an hour. And you, you're all aware, I don't need to explain to you, that a memorandum of understanding was signed yesterday with, uh, between the two governments. It is what it is, it's a commitment um, uh, to try and find a way to export the power. Uh, I see it as being an awful lot easier to do than a lot of others, even though the expenditure would be somewhere in the order of 13 billion, um, which sounds a lot, um, actually it is a lot. It's the single biggest project um, that's ever been attempted uh, in either of these countries. Um, and it's entirely innovative in that Britain is, uh, is going to supply itself with 5,000 megawatts from another jurisdiction. Well, anyway, we have proposed uh, to meet this, the challenge posed by this uh, memorandum of understanding by building uh, 5,000 megawatts in Ireland. Now, just an example of what is 5,000 megawatts. Uh, many of you won't be familiar with, the, uh, with, with what that means, but our peak demand for electricity in Ireland is around 5,000 megawatts. And it'll easily be the biggest engineering project undertaken uh, in this state since, since Arden Crusher was built. And as I mentioned a figure earlier on, the, the turbines themselves will cost about 1.5 million per megawatt, uh, euros per megawatt to install. And if you install 5,000, well, that's 7.5 billion. Uh, and the grid itself, if you base it on what Airgrid have spent on the east-west interconnector, for 500 megawatts they spent uh, about 600 million. So therefore it's going to cost about 6 billion uh, to build what we are proposing. And that gives a scale to it. It took uh, Airgrid maybe six or seven years uh, to build the 500 megawatts we're attempting uh, to build, and, and actually we will, uh, we'll commit to that, uh, to build 5,000 megawatts um, between 2017 and 2020. So um, the electricity will be transferred across high voltage direct current cables. When you're transferring electricity, as, as those in the ESB here will know and from Airgrid, uh, you can only do AC uh, at, at, a certain, at a certain level. Uh, you, can, you can transfer it in cables about 75 kilometers. Uh, but from the Midlands of Ireland over to the coast of Wales and to, and to uh, Cornwall uh, is a lot longer than that, 150 kilometers or so. And so you have to go with HVDC. There is an enormous need um, uh, to order that equipment early. Uh, there's about a three year to four year um, lead time to manufacture this equipment. Uh, ABB, uh, as you know, a very large company from Sweden and, and uh, Switzerland, and Siemens both manufacture this, uh, but there are lead times that are enormous here. So it isn't a trivial matter that, uh, that you know, we need to get the answers and we need to see the shape uh, of the intergovernmental agreement as soon as is, is, is humanly possible. Because if we're going to meet these targets, and Britain is actually chronically could be chronically short of power. It has committed to closing down 15,000 megawatts of coal-fired plant uh, between 2015 and 2022. So that means they're going actually to be short of power. And Ofgem, their regulator over there, says that they're going to have a 4% capacity margin only by 2016. So here's an opportunity for Ireland to help Britain meet uh, you know, three big requirements. One, security of energy supply. Um, you know, it'll be very secure coming from Ireland. Uh, two, it's, it's green commitment to have so much of its power coming from green sources. And three, uh, to offer a lower price than either gas or offshore wind, uh, which is what will happen when we uh, make the connection, uh, which we call the energy bridge uh, between Ireland and the UK. So, and, and it's a very big uh, question about all of this. You know, what's in it for Ireland? I mean, you can, I've, I've just enumerated what's in it for England. Uh, but what's in it for Ireland? And we've made the point that when you study what's happened in Germany and when you study what's happened in Denmark and when you innovate in an area like this, there's about one job created, uh, or eight jobs created for every one megawatt that's installed. Now, can we achieve that? Well, I don't know. It's up to, it depends on the quality uh, of, of, of our authorities like uh, IDA, Enterprise Ireland, uh, and FORFOS. Can we get the policy base right? Uh, but we've been doing a lot of work uh, with the Midlands about this. Um, Offaly County Council have designated an area to be a, a super cluster, a park uh, where we can bring in all this manufacturing industry between the two motorways. Uh, it's in NAM at the moment, I think. Uh, well, that doesn't matter. Uh, we that can always be added to. We need huge lay-down areas for the blades 
I've been talking to blade manufacturers and, and they tell me that uh, as against shipping the blades from Poland at £70,000 per, per, per trio of blades, they would, they would actually like to come into Ireland and their payback period on investment here in a factory is something like four years. So <coughs> also the towers uh, on which the turbines are built, you do not want to be transporting air around the world, so better to take in flat plates into Ireland and, and turn that into, into towers that are welded in factories and painted and coated then thereafter. So we have, uh, we have this enormous, uh, think about it, this stuff flows over Offaly. It's been flowing over there for as far as we know the last couple of million years. And nobody's derived a single solitary pound or euro or whatever dollar out of it. And so what we're talking about is turning that into an export for this country, which if we get it right and if we do what we say we're going to do, it'll actually be the equivalent of the dairy industry in 2011. We'll be deriving 2.5 billion of benefit from this by 2020. And that stuff is absolutely useless to us at the moment. Um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful resource. We never thought of it as such, particularly when we were growing up and you were getting wet and you were trying to play golf and do all kinds of things like that. But we can turn this into something that's incredibly valuable and a harbinger of things to come for the future. Uh, we're running out of oil. Oil is $110 a barrel. Um, yes, they can make oil, but they're going into incredibly difficult places like, like the deep ocean, um, the Stockman field off, off the north coast of, of uh, Russia, which is a huge gas field, the super elephant gas field. It's not being developed, um, and rightly so, I think, because it's just, it's, it costs more than it costs to do wind energy. And if you're doing a trade-off in the future and looking at wind and solar versus new coal, new oil, and new gas, actually, the renewables win just on cost alone, never mind on pollution avoided and what the world has to do to pay for that. 